Good morning. Today's reflection is based on a passage from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. And as I'm recording this, we are beginning our seventh week of confinement. Yep, seven. Like Jillian mentioned last week in the common section of our worship service, most of us miss seeing one another at church. We miss the way we used to gather to sing and pray on Sunday mornings. We miss uh, chit-chatting and exchanging the latest news. In a few days, Quebec's premier, François Legault, will present his plan for a progressive deconfinement for uh, schools or region and sectors of the economy. I don't have insider information, but I'm pretty sure that churches will be at the bottom of the list. Personally, I doubt we will see each other, that we will be back before Canada Day. I might be wrong. I hope to be wrong. But it does not look good, no. We will be cut off from our buildings and usual rites and rituals for a while. And this is frustrating for some of us because we are in the season of Easter, during which we are all invited to identify the presence of the risen Christ in our world. But how can we do this? If we're stuck inside our house, where can we see signs of resurrection when everything seems to have stopped? How can we encounter Jesus when church as we know it has been taken away from us? As I said, today's reading from the Gospel according to Luke features two disciples who are walking on a similar path than we are experiencing these days. From what we can understand, the life of Cleopas and his unnamed friend has been turned upside down by the life and teachings of Jesus of Nazareth. Well, they believed in him. They were, cons they were convinced he would change this world. They even decided to follow him to Jerusalem. But sadly, the one they considered to be the Messiah has died the most humiliating death imaginable. All the promises of a new kingdom has vanished, and like many other disciples, our two friends came to the conclusion that the only option left for them was to go back home to their former lives, to what the world considered to be normal, and to forget this journey as if it was just a bad dream. Cleopas and his friend were in the state of deep pain because they had such high hopes. They had hope that Jesus would redeem Israel one way or another. They had the same kind of hope as we do. When we hope that our tumor is not malignant, when we hope our marriage will survive stressful times, when we hope to keep our job in time of recession, when we hope this pandemic would spare the people we know, when we hope our faith will remain intact in times of crisis. They had this hope. But unfortunately, it did not become a reality, no. All they were left with was a profound sense of disappointment, hurt, and pain. Because, you see, the succession of events around, around Jesus' death happened so rapidly that the disciples did not have much time to absorb it. They were lost and could not think straight because they were still in the eye of the storm. They were like many of us once again. 
who feel overwhelmed these days when we watch the news. We are constantly bombarded with new numbers and data. The flow of information we receive is so fast that we struggle to really integrate it. We often lose sight of the big picture, the reason behind our current actions, decisions, and sacrifices. It's always been easier to process experiences and knowledge when some time has passed, rather than trying to figure it out as we go. And as they were simply trying to put one feet in front of another on the road to Emmaus, our two disciples met a strange traveled companion. Ah, well, we know it was Jesus. But the text tells us that their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And just to be clear, I don't believe that Jesus uh, disguised himself or tried to trick his old friends to test their faith. No, the disciples were simply too affected and caught up in their emotion and grief to be able to witness Christ's presence just besides them. They, they were not paying attention. Of course it would have been easier for them if Jesus yelled, Wake up guys, it's me! Or if some theatrical music began and a giant red arrow coming from sky pointed at him like might have been, but that's not Christ's way. We know that. So as, they're, as they journey together, Jesus began by listening to the disciple. We were talking about the women in astonishing statement that the that there were nobody that there was nobody in the tomb in the morning and the vision of angels who say that he was alive about some disciple who went to the tomb and found it just as the women had says but no one did see him so the disciples were unable to make sense of all of this well, Jesus helped them to turn their sadness into joy by placing this event in the broader context of God's all-encompassing story. He brought new meaning and new hope in their lives by interpreting to them the scripture. And as they came near the village, the disciple invited Jesus in their own. And once there, Jesus did something he had done so many times before. He shared food and gave thanks for it. And at this moment, the disciple finally got it. The risen Christ was present among them. Their eyes were open to the presence of the divine already surrounding them. And everything changed for the disciples. Like our two friends on the road to, to Emmaus, most of us feel that we have lost our bearings, our certainties, our ways of life. We are frustrated because we don't have access to our churches where we used to gather as a community and, and connect with God. We are disappointed because Jesus' promises of a better world seems to be hollow. We want to trust in the words of in the words we find in our Bible, but it's difficult to do it when we struggle to find obvious signs of the presence of the risen Christ all around us. We want to see, but our emotions, our pain, our disappointment shut our eyes well the good news for all of us is that despite everything going on in our world God is still God and we can count on the risen Christ in every age and every circumstance all that we need is to open our eyes to his presence in our world too often we struggle to understand what's happening around us because we do not pay attention to what's going on right in front of our face. 
It is often in the small and the ordinary things that the divine presence of God is revealed. The risen Christ shows up regularly at the most unexpected times and places. And it might be the stranger you see across the street and, and greet when you walk your dog. It might be the smile of a family member like a grandchild during a video conference call. It might be a greeting card from a friend you haven't seen in more than 10 years. It might be this inspiring book you're currently reading that helps you to open your heart and, and lives to others. It might be the conversations that you have with your steer crazy children. It might be so much more opportunities because Christ is not restricted by confinement. Wherever and whenever we make room for him, Jesus shows up to help us to make sense of everything. Well, once again, the scripture reading for this week reminds us of elements of life we miss deeply, traveling and you know, ability to engage with another human being, sharing meals. <laughs> we may feel especially anxious, uncertain, and frustrating about what the future will bring. We might be disappointed because this is not what we owe for 2020. We might be frustrated by not being able to gather in our church buildings. But as a good colleague of mine remind me this week, what we really need the most these days is not necessarily church. We need to increase our awareness of God's presence in our world that is constantly there constantly available to all of us. Our call is to open ourselves to the opportunity to experience the risen Christ wherever we are. And all that we have to do is to open our eyes and see. And then maybe our hearts too will burn within us. Amen.